What exactly is an on-collision event? An on-collision event is very similar to an on-trigger event, but instead of using a trigger, we're just using the collision and when a collider touches something. So we can go into Unity and set this up real quick. So we'll say create a 3D object. We want a cube. And we're going to give this cube. It's already got a box collider on it. And then we'll create another cube. This one is a box collider. And we're going to put it above this one. And we're going to add a rigid body to it. This way, when it falls, it'll connect. And we'll see that it connected. So we can say, call this falling cube. I can spell today. All right. So this is our stationary cube that has our has box collider on it, and our falling cube has a rigid body, uses gravity. So when we press play, we'll see that the cube falls to the other cube. Boom. What we want to happen is when it touches the other cube, we want to use an on collision event to call that out. So if we go into here, we can say start typing on collision and you get your options here. So we've got for 2D and 3D, uh, they function essentially the same. So we'll say on collision enter, public, or sorry, not public, what am I doing? Debug dot log, I've been hit, hit by plus and say collision, because we have our collision here being passed in, dot, can we just do name, do game object, dot name. So when it's been hit, it's just going to print out a line saying it's been hit and by what game object. So if we go in here and on our cube here, we'll add in the script that we just made. So I've got collision event script. Now if we open the console, we press play. We'll see I've been hit by falling cube. Now we have other options for this as well. We can say on collision exit, and it's essentially the same thing. And we'll just say this game object has left. And so when on collision exit occurs, we'll get another message. So press play, drop. I've been hit by a falling cube. If we go into the scene and we grab the falling cube, drag it up left and then we'll see that one trigger again and the last one we can talk about is on collision stay so this will be called every single uh, frame that the game object is sitting here so we'll say this game object is staying go back let's play and now we'll see entered and hit this game object is staying and we can see that's being called you'll notice that this only got called 16 times and then stopped despite being a stay which is supposed to happen every frame the issue with it is the uh, rigid body uh, the rigid body on the other object has gone to sleep because it's not it's no longer moving if I grab this in the scene mode and I move it around a little bit you'll see it's up to 32 if I slide it over it'll continually trigger if it's being moved and active but the moment it goes inactive, it stops calling. So what we can do is create an additional script for the rigid body. I'm just going to call it wake up. Because the rigid body is asleep. So in the update, if we just say... Uh, let's get a reference to the rigid body. So rigid body RB. RB is equal to get component dot rigid body. So we get a reference to our rigid body that is on this game object. And we'll say RB dot wake up. And you'd only need to use this if for whatever reason you absolutely have to have that rigid body awake and be using the stay method. But this is to show you that you can do it if you need to. So if we attach wake up to this. And now if I press play. The real console, we'll see that it's continuously firing like we expected it to because the rigid body is no longer allowed to go to sleep. 
And that is, about covers it for the rigid bodies. Uh, so, for example, the rigid body stay, or not rigid body, sorry, the on collision stay you would use for like a jumping script and like a platformer where you're running and you need to know if you're on the ground and you're allowed to jump or not. That way, every time you touch the ground, you can reset that jumping variable. Every time you leave the ground, you can say uh, can jump is equal to false. And that's kind of where something something like this would come in handy. Uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of other use cases that you can probably think of now that you have an understanding of it if you didn't before. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.